camera opens. South Africa, Soweto, 1982. A ghetto the size of a city. Metropolis defined by race hate. Apartheid dictates that you're a lesser man if your skin colour is darker than tan. So one million souls are packed into these tight streets. Meet for the grist of the mine that surrounds this monster, feeding on veins of metal tapped from underground. Can there be found a land more ready for revolution? A devolution of power from a government based on skin colour and the gun. The camera zooms in on one white Englishman here, clothes drenched in fear, his senses heightened by the chance of discovery. Police raids at night hear a certainty, but the world press is silent. Perhaps if the violence was at home or the victim shared the same genome as people in Europe and the States. But these crimes of hate too often go unmentioned or are pushed to the back page of the news. But this man wishes to bring the views of the world into this slum, to show them what has become of each man, woman and child under this vile regime. Perhaps then their dreams of freedom can become real. At least that's what he tells himself when he feels the ice run down his spine at each passing cup. He's travelled so far, called in so many favours. He savours the moment, opposite the man they call Mongameli, the preacher who has fought from the pulpit with his words speaking for the unheard and in the streets where the smell of cordite and blood fills the air. A man who has dared to be the voices people needed. A cause that must no longer go unheeded, but the whole world must hear. And so, with tape and camera, the Englishman records the prophet's tale. How the revolution will not fail so long as the one righteous man survives. The flame will be kept alive. The shot shifts to a corner where a boy sits deep in his books, his pen scribbling in concentration. My son, says the preacher, one day he will live in a free nation and will walk the streets without looking over his shoulder. The Englishman nods, feeling bolder now that the interview is drawing to a close. He does not mention the mother. He knows the day she was shot, the preacher left behind God and took up the gun. And that now the only one who can coax a smile from him is his son. What sort of life is this for anyone, thinks the Englishman, as he starts to pack. When the camera shifts back at the sound of running feet and the door flips. <laughs> Quick, run. The police come down the street. They know you are here. Though the Englishman's heart skips a beat, the preacher is cat quick on his feet. He grabs his son and then turns to the Englishman and says, If you want to live, run. And our vision shifts with them. They are four, running through the dark night in shit-strewn streets. The guide leading and the last, preacher and struggling his with his dun-coloured bag. The Englishman lags behind as he tries to pack his precious cassettes. Heart beating, time fleeting, they round a corner, and the guide is gone. And suddenly, where there was darkness, lights are shone, and they are lit up like targets in the night. We are blinded, but our sight clears first, and we know the worst. They are betrayed. And the Englishman, seeking to save, pulls them both back into the alley as shots fill the air. They flee in panic, the world a kaleidoscope of noise and dark, the sound of pursuit, the dogs bark, the night is loud with screams and death, and they run and run until there is nothing left. Then pull inside a doorway and pause for breath, chests heaving, minds racing. The shot zooms in on the Englishman, trying to slow down his beating heart. We follow his gaze to the preacher's arm and see dark where there should be a white shirt. And we know, even as he touches the slick sleeve, that this is more than a flesh wound. The whistle of the breath leaving the man's chest is the sound of death, and pursuit is close behind. Englishman, listen, no, don't speak, I'm betrayed. Take my son far from here, for though he holds this country dear, they will kill him if they know he is mine. My time is done, care for him as you would your own son. 
The camera catches the two men stare, and the preacher's eyes dare this stranger to say no to saving the last holy precious thing left to him in this world. It is a moment like a lifetime. Then the Englishman nods and the preacher turns for the very last time, pulls his son to him and holds him close, whispers his goodbyes. Then with tears in his eyes, he pushes him away and says, run, now, don't look back. They disappear from our sight. The crack of bullets in the night fills us with dread and we fear it may be too late. But death here tonight will not be this boy's fate. The preacher pushes himself to his feet and into the street and calls out at the top of his lungs, Come! Here! Look! It is I, Mungamelli! It is I! I am the one! And we wonder if they will spare him. And then, nothing but the sound of guns. opens once again on a plane's cabin first class, thousands of miles from the chaos of that night. The Englishman sits by the aisle, the boy to his right just staring from the window. Then the boy speaks. Where will I go? With me. Won't they come to find us? No, we'll say you were my cousin's son. He died whilst young as a doctor in Mozambique. No one will think that with my name. Well, your last name and mine must be the same. The boy is silent. To change a name is no small thing. But his father has taught him to survive and given his life so he could be alive and he will not fail. And this Englishman's name is not the worst. Though it is short and blunt on his tongue, he knows it means to have faith in someone, to feel kinship and obligation, a trust he has placed in this man from another nation, a bond with his dead father forged from blood and betrayal. Before his voice can fail, he asks, My first name? That must be your choice. The boy is silent again when he hears, as if in his father's voice, a verse from the Bible leap unbidden to his mind. You have killed the righteous man, though he did not resist you. And when he recalls the book he came from, he knows what his name must be now. You have killed the righteous man, though he did not resist you. And when he recalls the book it came from, he knows what his name must be now. A passing stewardess sees the Englishman and gasps. It's him, here on the plane. She's read his articles in the last six magazines she's bought. And now, fraught with excitement, she walks up and says, Sorry for asking, sir, but are you... He blushes, good-natured, quickly smiles and replies. Yes, Andrew, how do you do? Susan, oh my God, I'm all of a flush. I never thought I'd meet you, such a rush. And who is this young man? The camera lingers on her face and then pans around and in the place of the boy we see a grown man a warrior <laughs> 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 <laughs>